A few more years of this and we'll be a failed state. If we continue with the gross corruption and incompetence of Johnson's government, we're going to end up flipping from being a largely prosperous and stable nation into a nation in total economic, political and social chaos. We're complacent about this because we imagine it can't happen to us. You know, it's been so many years we've had a vast flow of money pouring through the United Kingdom, often seized effectively from the rest of the world. And we think, well, this is the way it's always going to be. But it doesn't necessarily stay that way. If you have gross misrule for long enough, then that misrule will turn your nation into a failed state. Societies are destroyed by oligarchs. That's why civilizations collapse, because you have a group of people whose interests are completely at variance with the rest of the population, but the rest of the population has got almost no say in the direction that society takes. And so those few people, the oligarchs, they drive that society into catastrophe. That's just what we're seeing today with Rupert Murdoch, with the other press owners, with the hedge funds, with the property developers, the people who've got a complete grip on this government because they created the government. They are the worst possible people to have in charge at a time of national crisis. One of the most extraordinary phenomena of our time is that in the midst of the chaos of the government's mishandling of the pandemic, which has meant that at times we've had the highest death rates on Earth, we see the Tory party's polling holding firm, 40% or so. How could this possibly be? We've been let down, betrayed, worse than any government has done in this country, arguably since the First World War. And yet still people are inclined to vote for the people who have been killing them. Why is this happening? It's happening solely because of the relentless propaganda in the billionaire press constantly reframing what's happening, painting Boris Johnson as our saviour, as this man who's come on clouds of glory to lift us out of the slough of despond. And yet what he's done is to combine the disaster of the coronavirus with the disaster of Brexit and dump us in this nightmare from which, well, it's going to take years to emerge. And yet somehow people want to vote for him. Well, that's because of the way their perceptions have been fundamentally distorted by the press. Without the relentless propaganda, Johnson wouldn't last five minutes in politics. He would never have become Mayor of London. He would never have become Foreign Secretary. He would never, above all, have become Prime Minister. This guy's an inveterate liar. Everyone knows he's an inveterate liar. He's a charlatan. He's a fraud. In a system not dominated by dirty money, not dominated by the media barons, how could he possibly have survived and prospered. It's only through them that he can govern. He doesn't govern in his own right. He's effectively Rupert Murdoch's viceroy. And of course, it's completely unsurprising that there's payback here. Rupert Murdoch supports Boris Johnson's bid for power, and in return, he gets the media deregulated so he can set up his own broadcasting outfit. You look at these companies who have got coronavirus contracts, not even delivering the products or the services which they're being paid to deliver. And some of them, as Tory donors, might have given a few tens of thousands to the government. They are reaping hundreds of millions of pounds in untended contracts from that same government. But above those immediate results, you get something much deeper than that. You get an entire political environment that favours your interests, that favours dirty money over clean money, that favours money over people, that favours plutocracy over democracy. And what this does is to create the most dangerous thing in politics, which is impunity. It doesn't matter what the government does, they get away with it. It doesn't matter how many people die. It doesn't matter because you sustain the support of Rupert Murdoch and Lord Rothermere and the Bartley brother. And so you can get away with anything. And that is the most dangerous situation you can have politically, because it means that there are no breaks. There's no restraint on what a government might do. And that's how you end up with an elective dictatorship. So you might have thought this is a perfect opportunity for Labour to move in and say, look, this bunch of charlatans and liars are only going to lead us into further disaster. Here we are with a new narrative. But instead, we see Labour effectively buttoning its lip 
And Labour are saying, well, you know, we've got to keep our powder dry. The election is three or four years off. No, sorry. We're in the midst of a national crisis, a huge national disaster, bigger than any we've had for a very long time. You've got to stand up and say, here is the alternative vision. Here is how we can rebuild this nation into something completely different. And we have a government which just wants to get back to how things were before. Normal, they call it. How is it normal to have an economy in which a few billionaires reap most of the gains of economic growth while people at the bottom become poorer and poorer? How is it normal to be destroying our life support systems in the name of economic growth? We need a completely different economy and we have a golden opportunity to create that economy now, but Labour is not standing up and articulating it. And by the time the election comes around, well, who knows? the opportunity might not be there at all. And it frustrates me to see Keir Starmer just dithering almost as badly as Boris Johnson dithers. The only opportunities we ever get for sweeping political change are in the wake of a major crisis. After the Second World War, for example, there was a massive crisis and we ended up with massive political change arising from that because Clement Attlee was able to step forward and say, we need to rebuild this nation on new lines. And he did that very effectively. Then we had another massive crisis in 2008 with the financial crisis. And there was a golden opportunity there for Labour to say, look, a terrible thing has happened. To stop this from happening again, we need to rebuild this nation on different lines. But it failed to do that. It just tried to get things back to the way they were before, the disastrous way that they were before. And now it's happening again. Here we are in the midst of an enormous crisis, greater than any since the Second World War. And far from standing up and articulating that alternative, Labour is effectively nodding along with the outrageous system that we have normalised. Suggesting a few tweaks, but not suggesting systemic change, which is what we currently need. Now, the government, with the help of the billionaire press, is very good at just brushing things under the carpet. But can you really brush 100,000 deaths under the carpet? Can you really brush under the carpet all the people with long COVID, all the people whose livelihoods have been completely destroyed by the government's failure to get a grip on the pandemic early on? Not if the people come forward and say, enough is enough. We're not putting up with this any longer. We've had enough of being treated like the dirt under your shoe. This is a time for us to come together and demand that alternative. Demand a system which allows us to have a much greater say in politics day to day. And that's got to start with proportional representation and we're getting the money out of politics. We've just got to stop politics being polluted by big money, which turns democracy into plutocracy. And we have got to come together and fill that vacuum, which Labour has completely failed to fill. Politics abhors a vacuum. There are massive opportunities for people to put forward an exciting, thrilling vision of how our nation should be. And this is our moment. This is a time when we can press for systemic change. But these moments don't come up very often. And horrible and disastrous as this has all been, we have to turn this crisis into an opportunity for change. Gross misrule is the other pandemic that we face. All the elements are there, potentially, for state failure. So we need a vaccine for this other pandemic. What is that vaccine? Us. Double Down News is an antidote to the lies of the billionaire press, an antidote to the failures of the broadcast media, an antidote to the attempts by Rupert Murdoch and others to grab ever more of the media for themselves and to make us see the world as they want us to see it. If you want to see the world differently, please become a patron of Double Down News and subscribe through Patreon. Thank you.